Welcome to the last episode, uh, Prof. Thank you, Sam, for, for the opportunity. Yeah, let, let's talk about, I refer to you as a psychologist, author, and entrepreneur. Yes. Um, I want us to talk about those in this last episode. Of, of course, the psychology part, we addressed that. But uh, I'm fascinated by your passion for diversity and inclusion and the book that you have written, uh, 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 Salt and Pepper. Uh, that's the title of your book. And then, of course, you can touch on the other books if you have time. But I also want to talk about your... I mean, you have, you have, you have stopped being an academic. You are, in terms of lecturing, but you are, you are now a consultant. You are working for a lot of companies uh, in areas of diversity and inclusion and many other aspects. Uh, uh, so many people may not know about that. And, and that, that I regard you as an entrepreneur, although the service is that of consulting. That's an enterprise on its own. And I think it just shows that if you have run a well-balanced, structured career journey, you, you can roof it up with uh, something like the setup you have where you work for yourself, but you see your brain and as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a source of service. Thank you, Sam. You know, I must say, um, starting now, you know, to say uh, where to go over there, as they put it, yeah. you know, post the university career. Yeah. I met young, two young men, uh, you know, Simpiwe from Empower Works. Yes. And they were committing me caring for the carers. Yeah. But now come to the element of the entrepreneurial element. Yeah. You realize that, you know what, you come up with your experience, but here are young persons. Yes. Who have been there before you, mm. including yourself at the, at Comesa. Yes. Who have dabbled in the consulting world, and uh, these young men trusted me with their clients mm. and said, Prof, we have a, a workshop on, on diversity and inclusion. Yes. Just take care of our clients. Mm. And uh, I was lucky to start off with uh, one company where, you know, one was there for something like four years. Yes. Every month uh, going to facilitate, you know, two to three workshops. Mm. Uh, a month mm. uh, where we're looking at diversity and and inclusion. Mm. And the title of the book actually is Salt and Pepper. Mm. Uh, came from one of the participants. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I don't want to get into the jargon and the complexity of using the concept color. Yes. But um, for our conversation, let's say she is colored. Yes. She was colored. And then she said, I don't know how to describe myself. Yes. Uh, I'm half African. I'm half white. Yes. So I'll call myself salt and pepper. And I said, wow. <laughs> that's, that's a fascinating way. Two, two, two complimentary. <laughs> yes. yes. And then salt uh, and pepper being very, very important ingredients. Mm. to give food flavor. Yes. Diversity gives organization a flavor. Mm. In the sense that if we start appreciating mm. that we bring different perspectives, mm. we bring different insights, mm. we bring different experiences, mm. and then um, the element of mutual respect for one another, I think that is engendered uh, within that diversity, really, mm. where you realize that no one knows it all. Mm. We need our collective wisdom to run organizations. Mm. And uh, tapping into your wisdom and the diverse perspectives and insights of others it makes you better understand uh, the, the complexity of the current world. Mm. I mean, you know, increasingly, and I think COVID-19 has uh, highlighted that, 
this world is so complex that mm. no one person has the intelligence yeah. to to solve the challenges uh, that uh, we we all face. Mm. We need uh, you know, to have respect for all insights, for all perspectives, and I like the idea of the many teams, you know, that are advising the president, that are working at provincial level, but in the various corporates, mm. in the schools, where we have more appreciation for diverse insights, diverse perspectives, diverse competencies, mm. diverse mm. skills. Mm. Mm. Maybe because a, a one-man show uh, does no longer hold. There is one complexity that is uh, brought into the South African context, being the, the, the type of history uh, that we have and the political struggle uh, and isolation we have had. What do you say to that? Yeah. So, unfortunately, you know, th that history, uh, it's, a, it's a legacy mm. uh, that we have inherited, you know, well, coming many generations back, mm. and we are indebted uh, to people like Ndate Mandela and others, mm. and many others, well, Dr. Moroka, the Molema brothers, mm. and coming all the way back, who really fought for our liberation. But I think the starting point, and I think this is a, an important nexus, and I found it in many conversations, is mm. when we enter the realm with the commitment of mutual respect and not blaming one another mm. and recognizing our history mm. and acknowledging it mm. and not from a sense of blaming but from a sense of saying look this is it this is where we find ourselves is that possible How prof with the so much imbalances of power that is aligned and associated with, with race and, and gender, the way the society of South Africa has evolved. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that cannot be denied. That they, there are people who are blind to their privilege, who, who don't uh, acknowledge privilege and think that whatever, whoever they are and whatever they are, is by dint of hard work. Mm. And you know, in our workshops, we try and dispel that very, very quickly mm. Mm. in terms mm. of just people yes. understanding. Yes, even, even, our though, even though we will be seen as singling them out and being very hateful, but the reality is that, is that the facts are showing, the practice as the stats is showing, and that is delaying the country in a big way because so many sideline members of the society who could be making massive contribution to growing the economy in the country are left outside and, and, and we are stuck in that way. Yeah, and, 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 and I think uh, let me hasten to say you, you know, even at the highest levels, I remember facilitating a workshop where there were a lot of chartered accountants mm. and uh, actuarial scientists mm where one was making the point, especially around the uh, actuarial scientists, that, you know, you, to get more people in this realm, you need to give support. You know, this fellow was making the, the point that, no, I want somebody who has all these licenses. Say, where would she get those licenses that you speak of when there has not been exposure? And you realize that this fellow has no clue mm. uh, about this other world, about this other struggle. Mm. So sharing the narratives, mm. sharing the journeys, mm. sharing the experiences. Mm. But I think most importantly, in saying, you know what, unless we do something about this, mm. uh, we are just making posterity. Mm. Uh, to inherit this nonsense, mm. and mm. we can't afford that. Mm. Prof, those who have, for those who have not uh, read your book, uh, just give us synopsis of your what your book entails and the chapters you are addressing, and uh, how can one use it as a as a reference for 
diversity management and inclusion interventions? Yeah, I think um, the key thing is starting from understanding our context, uh, you know, from the constitution, mm. understanding the legislation that was supportive of segregation and uh, apartheid, mm. looking at some corporate examples, you know, for example, uh, an equal pay for equal work, mm. uh, the issue of, you know, gender discrimination, even up to now. Those are the things that, you know, we start um, highlighting. Mm. But we also go out to look at, you know, some great examples. You know, my One of the great examples I make is of the EPL, mm. who recognize that to have what they have, they've had to call on players from all over, from all over the world. Mm. And um, begin to look at the young people of today who have attended, you know, all these great schools, mm. who to this day still reflect and talk about, you know, the racism, for example, the girls in terms of their own hair, mm. which was not uh, accepted. Mm. We talk about, you know, the, the soft skills that are truly hard and say cultural intelligence like emotional intelligence, is one of those important uh, soft skills, you know, to begin appreciating the, the context in which you, you, you work. But I think uh, marinating the organization, the organizations, mm-hmm. at strategic level, you know, diversity and inclusion must not just be a compliance issue, mm-hmm. a tick box exercise. When we do that, we, we lose the blood. Mm. Mm. When we factor, you know, diversity and inclusion and realize that when we don't take care of it, it's actually a risk to the organization. Mm. Because, you know, things simmer for a while, but when they burst at the seams, uh, they become incapable of being contained. And I think, you know, the, the current uh, issues in the USA and globally yes. reflect how, you know, a, a, a tension that is not attended to uh, mm. can lead to a huge uh, conflagration and explosion. Mm. Mm. And um, the, the, the book then highlights, you know, education, awareness, and uh, the definition of, of, of diversity and um, the role of empathy, mm. Mm. The, the various uh, perspectives, especially the building of, of trust mm. uh, becomes, uh, becomes key. Mm. And, mm. Mm. What has been your key observations as you facilitated uh, diversity management and inclusion workshops across industries and sectors? Yeah. I think um, where I've seen, you know, results and impact is, is, is where people, you know, kept on doing it beyond the, the workshop and not just doing it as a once-off. Mm. Beginning mm. to appreciate that, you know, for example, when we go for our Christmas party, we'll try and go to a place like uh, Villagazi Street, uh, for example, mm. to be exposed to a different place, to be exposed to a different cuisine, mm. to have a, a monthly diversity and inclusion awareness. Mm. And mm. Once a month, you know, a mm. day where diversity and inclusion are celebrated, where people are allowed to bring in the cuisine from their culture to dress uh, in terms of their culture. Mm. And and just for the collegiality sometimes mm. where people, you know, attend uh, one another's celebrations like weddings but also support one another mm. in difficult times like funerals. Mm. So, so this should not be a program in the company, it should be a program across in, in and outside companies. Across, across, it should not be just a, a human resource issue to to comply, but a, a constant thing of saying, look, the 
has been a gap. Mm. We have not uh, had the opportunity of knowing one another because of the divide mm. over many years. And if we explore, um, you know, the opportunities across divides, mm. there is much more in common mm. than there is uh, different. Mm. Yeah, uh, wonderful. I, I think this, this will forever be a relevant topic. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we, we have not scratched uh, the surface, you know, and it wasn't just for that time. Mm. So if I may just highlight that, for example, during 2010, mm. uh, when we hosted the World Cup, mm. there was an amazing camaraderie mm. in, in, in the country. And somehow we had this collective South Africanism mm. where we moved across, you know, like, Rugby being played for the first time in Soweto. You know, it is amazing how that was an eye opener. Mm. Small and inconsequential as it might seem. But there were people who went to Soweto for the first time. Yes. Men in their forties, in their fifties. Mm. And, and and the power of, 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 of sports and um, cultural activities. Mm. Just sharing sharing narratives and safeguarding, you know, naming, blaming, shaming. Mm. Because mm. that raises resistance mm. and, and people being on guard. But mm. when it is a, a conversation mm. uh, with the intention of creating a, a better South Africa than we found it, I found the results being powerful. Mm. Prof, I, I have... Uh... I've worked with you for many years, and I think uh, we need to comment uh, uh, our brother Simpiwe Masisa from Empower Works, who, who brought us together. And, uh, and you and I, we have worked together, but we have never had such a lengthy conversation like we are having now, which is really great. Great. I think it just shows that uh, we, need to put, we need to set time aside to get to share our stories, because... There is meat in it, and there is so much in it. Uh, uh, um, and I, I think this platform that we have created uh, in the form of this radio, I think will, 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 will serve that purpose. But in general, I think it's very important for people to set time aside and to share the stories because there's a, there is so much in it. Thank you for, for the opportunities um, much appreciated and you know indebted to you as well for the many workshops that we co-facilitated mm. and and learned from one another mm. and the young entrepreneurs out there is you know their preparedness to to soldier on mm. to to stick to it mm. and not to expect instant results absolutely and i think <laughs> it's safe to say as well that you 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 and Kometa are I, 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 I one thing now because we do you as an associate and us as your associate we do collaborate and I think collaboration is the way to go uh, however I'm still going to ask you at the end to give people your contact details for whatever reasons people may want to reach out to you because you've touched on so many things yeah. but I would like you to to start by letting people know if they want to get a hold of your book where do they get a hold of it? How do they go about getting it? And uh, how much is yes. it? How much they do can, they have to? to how they much do they pay for it? Drop us an, an email at wbudibe at mweb.co.za. And um, the book sells for 200 rand. Mm. Or oh. contact me. On my cell phone number zero eight two six five three four six eight zero. Mm. They can leave a, a WhatsApp message and then I'll follow up. Yes, and and those will be the same details if they they are interested in inviting you for a conversation with their teams. Absolutely, or, absolutely. Those will be the yeah. same details. Otherwise, failing which they can always call Commerza yeah. Office. Commerza, yes, yes. And yes. then we can bring them together. But I always insist that when we give the cell phone numbers, we also give it for the, our international listeners by giving the South African uh, uh, international oh, code yes, two, two, and two, the whole seven, number. Two, two, 
Yeah, it's two seven and then eight. Oh, yeah, oh, two seven and then eight two uh, six five three four six eight zero. Yeah, wonderful, yes. beautiful. Uh, Prof, any closing remarks? Just to say thank you for for the opportunity, but then say you know right now as humans, we are facing something unprecedented in the history of the world. And it is calling on all of us not to, to panic, to keep on faith, and to remain resilient. This too shall pass. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Prof. I want to also to emphasize that you are also available on Facebook as uh, what name? Yes, Cecil, Cecil Budibe. Cecil Budibe yes. on Facebook. They, that's yeah. where they can find you. Prof, yes. thank you very much. It has been wonderful chatting to you. It was as if I'm meeting you for the first time. Okay. I really enjoyed uh, you sharing with us your journey uh, up to where you are now. And I think the journey goes on. We will probably continue engaging with you uh, on this platform. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Professor Cecil Budibe. He is a specialist on diversity and inclusion, an author, psychologist, and, of course, entrepreneur. Uh, thank you for tuning in. That was uh, Comesa Club Radio Africa presenting Prof to you. We are excited that we can have you uh, in this program and we look forward to welcoming you back. Thank you. Thank you um, for the opportunity, sir. Goodbye.